Rayup Station. A trip on a steam train. Early in the morning, the first passengers arrived to make a journey into the past on a train operated by the Dampfbahnfurke Bergstrecke, German for the Furke Cogwheel Steam Railway, or DFB. Nowadays, this labor-intensive means of transport practically only ever serves as an attraction for tourists and rail enthusiasts. At the crack of dawn, the DFB staff are already busy making preparations for the journey, preparing the locomotive for service on this beautiful summer's day. One important piece of equipment in the Rayalp depot is the turntable, or wheelhouse, which is used to turn the steam locomotive around so it always points in the right direction. Here the engine is being rotated to load more coal, an indispensable fuel for crossing the Forca Pass. This turntable used to be in Pontrashina and was donated to the DFB by the Ration Railway in 1989. The locomotive's water tanks are also filled. Besides coal, water is equally important for safely reaching the end of the route in Obervolt. The engine returns to the turntable once more so that it can travel in the right direction to the train waiting at Rayalp Station. The DFB, or Furka Cogwheel Steam Railway, creates a connection across the old mountain pass between Royalp and Obervolt. The line can only be operated in summer and is fitted with a rack and pinion system for climbing the steep inclines. The railway line was originally launched in two sections. The first section from Obervolt to Gletsch was opened in 1914. And it was not until 12 years later, in 1926, that the line was extended and connected to the Ration Railway Network.
The railway, which had been electrified in 1942, was taken out of service in 1981 on completion of the 15-kilometer-long Forca base tunnel between Oberwald and Railp, enabling the then Forca Oberalp railway to operate all year round. From that point on, only the tunnel was used, and the above-ground service became a thing of the past. The surface railway is 17 kilometers long. It has four stations and travels through a 794 meter altitude range. After being taken out of service, the plan was to dismantle the line. However, a group of rail enthusiasts felt that this was a step too far. And in 1982, they founded the Forca Cogwheel Railway Society with the aim of restoring the line to its former glory. To do so, they needed to retrieve a number of the original steam locomotives that had been sold to Vietnam after the electrification of the railway. Spewing clouds of steam, the train chugs out of Railp Station, ready to cross the railway pass to Oberwald. First of all, we pass the depot and the new workshop. While the volunteers are busy working just beyond rail, the train approaches the first rack and pinion section. With inclines of up to 11%, the train would never make it up without extra help. Up we go, and the fires are given a good stoke. The train crosses the Wielerbrücke Bridge to reach the southern side of the valley. This steel bridge was built in the 1950s to replace the old stone bridge that had been damaged by the forces of nature. At the start of the trip, three short tunnels follow in quick succession.
Every spring, the railway line must be brought out of hibernation and returned to a serviceable condition. Snow needs to be removed, especially between Railp and Tiefenbach. Because the tracks are located on the shadowy side of the valley, the risk of an avalanche can sometimes last until May. In the past, avalanches have been known to bury the lines in over 10 meters of snow. This footage is from 1999, after a heavy snowfall had caused a string of major avalanches. Some say that it was the heaviest snowfall since the winter of 1950-51. To clear away such vast quantities of snow, the location of the tracks must first be established and marked. After that, a rotary snowplow on caterpillar tracks removes most of the snow, up to about a meter above the tracks. Not all of the snow can be removed by machine. Sometimes manual labor is required, such as here at the top of the tunnel entrance. The last of the snow is cleared away by a diesel engine fitted with a rotary snowplow. These black and white images show that in the past, the work was mostly done by hand. Here, people are working to dig what are called snow tunnels. The trains actually drove through them back then. This is the famous Steffenbach Bridge. Built in 1926, it traverses a lateral valley located in an avalanche zone. The original stone bridge was destroyed by an avalanche before even a single train had ever driven across it. So they opted for a steel bridge that could be retracted at the end of the summer season without needing to be completely dismantled. Once the danger of avalanches had passed, it could be erected once more. This animation shows the stages used to return the bridge from the winter to the summer position. First of all, the section on the rail side is extended into place. Maneuvering the sections of the bridge used to require manual labor. It took four men to operate the hoists, which meant that retracting or erecting the bridge always took several days. During the second stage, the section on the Tiefenbach side is put into its summer position.
Lastly, the middle section is winched up. The entire structure is locked into place and the rails and rack and pinion system assembled on top. Nowadays, erecting the bridge is only a day's work. Passengers traveling through the three short tunnels and across the Steffenbach Bridge will hardly notice how much work is needed to prepare this short section of track each year. The first stop is Tiefenbach. Although passengers rarely board or alight at this remote station at an altitude of 1,849 meters, the station's main purpose is to refill the locomotive's water supply. Passengers use the stop to stretch their legs, go in search of woodchucks, or take photos of the train. After filling the tanks, we head off again for Furka and Gletsch. The track climbs even higher, and the landscape becomes barer and barer. Trees no longer grow at this altitude. We cross over to the valley's northern side via the Steinstoffel overpass, an arched stone bridge built using traditional methods and locally mined stone. Stokers need to work hard here, as the 11% incline requires a lot of steam, which means more coal on the fires. Driving this traditional rack and pinion locomotive from 1913 is specialist work. A long training period and grueling exams are required before it starts to become second nature. Thank you. 
Our next stop is Forca, 2,160 meters above sea level. The station is situated around 300 meters lower than the pass itself, at the opening of the old Forca tunnel. Trains often pass each other here. Look, the train from Glitch is already approaching. The stop at Forca is short, but long enough to grab a bite to eat and something to drink. The train from Rail also needs to ascend to reach Forca station. Until the year 2000, this was the steam train's last stop, where the locomotive had to turn around and make the return trip to rail. Forca Station marks the beginning of the Forca Scheidel Tunnel, which connects Forca and Mutbach stations. In the year 2000, after major renovations, the 1,874-meter-long tunnel was officially opened up again for use by the DFB. At 2,160 meters above sea level, it is Switzerland's highest railway tunnel and connects the cantons of Uri and Wallisch.
Many volunteers started work on the line in 1983, which could only be completed during the short summer season at an altitude of 1,500 to 2,100 meters above sea level. Footage from 1937 shows where these volunteers got their inspiration from. The Rhone Glacier, here still in its full glory, has continued to recede over the years. Just as for this 1937 train, reaching Gletsch was an important goal for the DFB. After years of summer volunteer work, or Fronarbeit as the Swiss say, the first steam-operated train pulled into Gletsch station on the 27th of August, 1998. But there was still lots of yard work to be done before the train could travel on to Obervault, including repairing a switch. of an American steam whistle makes the train seem a little out of place as it heads off to Rayalp again. The DFB has several workshops in Switzerland where equipment is maintained and overhauled. The workshop where carriages are restored is located in Adol. Although the carriages are often hand-me-downs, after an extensive overhaul, they are perfectly usable once more. The workshops are also equipped with excellent machinery that highly skilled volunteers use to manufacture all kinds of new components. The DFB overhauls and maintains its own steam engines. The work is performed by in-house specialists, as superb craftsmanship is required to overhaul and maintain a steam engine with a combined rack and pinion system and adhesion drive. This old rust bucket from Vietnam is still waiting for a complete overhaul, a process that will take years. Lots of work needed to be carried out before the final section of the line could be opened between Gletsch and Obervault. They still needed to build a station in Obervault, repair bridges and overpasses, and restore the helical tunnel in Gletsch. First of all, the tracks were repaired, so they could once again accommodate construction trains. The DFB is the proud owner of a steam-operated rotary snowplow, 
built in 1913 and obtained from the Raytheon Railway. Here, the boiler is receiving an in-house overhaul. Flues and supporting bolts are being replaced. Here, the thread is being cut for the bolts that support the ceiling plate in the firebox. Sometime in the future, it should also be possible to shoot footage at the DFB, like these images from 1937. This unique steam engine can clear snow to a breadth of two meters across the track, blowing it up to 12 meters away on either side. While the Fronisch, or volunteers, are busy with line maintenance, a train hired by an advertising firm returns from Gletsch on its way to rail. This is the final climb before reaching Mutbach station. This station was named after the stream, or Bach in German, that funnels water away from the Mut glacier situated high above. It was built atop the rubble excavated during the construction of the Furka Scheitel Tunnel and was opened in 1926. The Scheidel Tunnel fell into disuse between 1981 and the year 2000. Following major renovations, the line between Forca and Gletsch was reopened and passengers could once again travel to Gletsch by steam train. We are now following the steep decline down the valley's southern side towards Gletsch. We have a view of the Rhone Glacier, or what is left of it these days at least. Gletsch is a village situated at the crossroads of the Furka and Grimschel passes. It consists of a chapel, the Glacier du Rhone Hotel, the Blauhaus Hotel, and the DFB station. Ask an engine driver what the most important thing is about driving a train, and he'll say, the brakes. 
The braking systems of rack and pinion steam locomotives are extremely complex and must comply with all kinds of safety regulations. The water tanks are also refilled in Gletsch. Back to 1981, when the Forca Oberalp Railway took its leave of the Forca Cogwheel Railway. Between 1941 and 1981, the electric Forca Oberalp trains traversed the entire mountain route. Here we can see the ABT rack and pinion system with its staggered gear teeth. This ensures a smoother ride. The Glacier Express also continued to travel above ground until 1981, which must have been a very unique experience in the steam age. On the 12th of August, 2010, the big day came. The opening of the section from Gletsch to Obervault made the old mountain railway complete, just as it was in 1981. The official opening journey was made with staff who had volunteered their time and effort for years, dedicated to reaching Obervault.
After more than 25 years of work carried out by idealists, the final result was attained. The first ever steam train to make the entire crossing from Realp to Oberwald. The first train attracted a lot of interest, and the opening was officiated by former federal council member Adolf Ogi. He was assisted by brothers Walter and Manfred Willi, DFB pioneers from day one. The above ground trains here used to travel along a rack that protruded above the surface. This system is no longer permitted, and so the DFB developed a solution using a sunken rack that was designed and constructed entirely by the DFB. Here we also make acquaintance with the former Forca Oberalp Railway, HGM 44. Donated on loan by the Matterhorn Gotthard Railway, this diesel engine can now enjoy renewed popularity thanks to the efforts of the DFB diesel crew. Extended dry periods between Obervault and Gletsch create the risk of forest fires due to smoldering coals escaping from the steam locomotives. To prevent fires, a kind of sprinkler system has been installed that moistens the area immediately surrounding the tracks.
The system is intended for use shortly before the train passes and again afterwards. Although sometimes it also helps to keep the passengers cool. The section between Oberwald and Gletsch is very popular among tourists. To accommodate these passengers, short trains also shuttle between these two stations. Steam locomotives from the Wiesp Zermatt Railway are used for this purpose, as well as the HGM 44 diesel engine. This diesel engine was first used in 1967 by the Forca Oberalp Railway, and it serves as a backup during electrical blackouts, during maintenance work, or for clearing snow. Just like any busy railway hub, the diesel engine leaves Gletsch as soon as the steam train from Obervault has arrived.
Water is also taken on in Gletch during the return trip from Obervault to Rail. The last train of the day carefully mounts the rack section on the way to rail. This whistle signal is very special. It commemorates an avalanche that took place at this location on the 15th of May, 1965, claiming a locomotive that was busy clearing snow. Three people lost their lives. In their memory, the whistle is always blown whenever a locomotive passes the site of the accident. The last train home also gets a little help in Muttbach from a diesel locomotive. This is for safety reasons, because of the problems caused by the steep incline on the Muttbach side of the tunnel in combination with its moist environment. On the last day of the operating season, we also look back on the day in 1981 when the last Forca Oberalp railway train crossed through the mountains. The disappointed railway buffs from back then have now made way for happy passengers, thanks to the hundreds of volunteers that have helped turn this project into reality.